Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about the new Amazon Prime Tick series. And this is the third different version of the Tick we've seen on TV now. It started off as a comic book back in the 1980s that was adapted to an animated series in the 90s, kind of in the same way Ninja Turtles was, I think, hoping that they could cash in the way that Ninja Turtles had been able to. But unfortunately the toy line didn't really sell very well, so the cartoon show only lasted three seasons, which isn't too bad, and it was a good show. It was purely because of the toy sales that they cancelled it, because back in the 90s, by that point, cartoons pretty much just existed to sell toys. The moustache of a titan! Yeah! <laughs> to safety, sidekick! Yeah! Arthur? Then it was resurrected in 2001 as a live action show starring Patrick Warburton as the Tick. Now because I was so used to Townsend Colesman as the Tick, who's probably best known for voicing Michelangelo in Ninja Turtles, but he also voiced Sentinel Prime in Transformers Animated and he's done lots of uh, voiceover work in cartoons. But because I was so used to him as the Tick, it took me a while to accept Patrick Warburton. I didn't really like the show initially, but after giving it another go, he is fantastic in the role. The one problem with the, the 2001 live action series is that there was pretty much no action. It concentrated purely on the humour. Now, I'm not sure if that was for budgetary reasons, because obviously superhero shows cost a lot of money. And back then, TV shows weren't given the kind of budget they are nowadays. I mean, now we've got things like Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. TV shows are a lot bigger now than they were in the early noughties. So it was very much based more on the comedy side, and that's great because The Tick is a comedy show, but it is also a superhero show. You do need a bit of action in there. That's kind of part of what makes The Ticks interesting, that it isn't just comedy. It is a parody in general of superheroes, and that involves the action of superheroes. Now, that show only lasted one season, and so it's been a good 15 years we had to wait for The Tick to return, but finally he did in 2016 on Amazon Prime where they debuted the season premiere to try and gauge interest to see if it was worth making a whole season of the show. Luckily it was pretty popular and so they commissioned a whole season, five episodes of which were shown recently on Amazon Prime, bringing the total to six and there's going to be at least another four if not six more episodes either later this year or early next year. Peter Serafinowicz has taken on the role of the Tick this time, and much in the same way with Patrick Warburton, I had a hard time accepting him in the role in the pilot episode. I just didn't think he was right for it. I was so used to Patrick Warburton in the role by this point, and I wish they'd brought him back. But now I've seen the rest of the episodes, Peter Serafinowicz does a great job. It's hard to say which version of the Tick is my favourite, because all three actors do really well in the role and they kind of suit the series they're in but he's definitely no worse than the last two he, I mean he is great I'm tempted to say he's my favorite but maybe that's just because it's all new and exciting maybe in a year's time I can kind of judge it a bit more fairly but as it is I really like him in the role in the pilot episode the suit they gave him it was a, a very light blue and it made him look skinny, it made his head look too round. Stop your evil ways! That didn't help, he just didn't look right. But they took on board fan criticisms of the suit and by the second episode onwards, the suit looks fantastic now. It's better than the Patrick Warburton suit as well, which was very clumsy and it didn't cover his eyes, so it didn't quite look right as the tick, it just had his face exposed. In this one, it's probably as true to the cartoon and comics as you could get in live action. It's a re really great looking suit. They've designed it so it gives him a bit more of a tick chin without it looking cartoony. Uh, it makes him look buffer now and not as skinny as the suit did in the first episode. The cast in general in this new series is pretty good. Uh, Griffin Newman as Arthur is definitely the best Arthur. I the, the, the guy who played Arthur in the 2001 series was fine, but I, I think uh, Griffin Newman does a far better job. Um, the series kind of focuses on him, which is interesting, because even though the Tick is the funniest character, and he's the, the character that's going to draw you to him just because of how extravagant he is, really Arthur's the one who's the more interesting. The Tick's pretty simple as a character. Arthur has a lot more nuances to him, so it kind of makes sense, at least for now, to focus on him and his journey becoming a superhero, because the Tick's already a hero. The Tick doesn't really change too much. 
Um, he starts off a hero and he ends a hero. It's, it's Arthur's journey that we follow in these first six episodes at least, and I think at least for another four as well. Uh, the writers have hinted that if we get a season two, which looks like we will do, then it will start to focus more on the tick and possibly his backstory, which I'm a bit dubious about because part of me doesn't need to know the tick's backstory. I think the charm of him is that he just appears and he is just a hero. So it really depends how they handle it. The tick's creator, Ben Edlund, is involved in this pretty much every step of the way. So that gives me some faith that if they do finally come out with some kind of origin for the tick, it will be done right. Jackie Earl Haley plays the Terror, who I think is the only supervillain who has been in every version of the tick so far. He's been in the comics, the cartoon, the 2001 series, and this series, though he's never been given this kind of development before. Now then, you all know me. <laughs> the Terror. We'll put an end to your reign of terror. Your reign of you! I just took my drowsy pills. Ha! Evil never sleeps, mister. Oh, leave me alone. I'm 112 years old. I'm done. Don't be an Adolf Quitler. Miss me? <laughs> uh, he's definitely the main villain of the show, which makes sense because he's a supervillain who's been around for a good 50 odd years. He was kind of the first supervillain, really. So it makes sense that he would be the big bad. In the cartoon, it was more Chairface Chippendale. I'm not sure how they'd be able to really adapt him to live action, but I don't think they can anyway because of rights issues, and I'll get onto that with a lot of characters. There are fan favourites from the cartoon series who I love as well, such as Deflader Mouse, American Maid, Sewer Urchin, Crusading Chameleon, uh, Civic Minded Five. Pretty much all of them are off limits um, because of the Disney now owns the rights to the 90s cartoon series so characters that were uh, made solely for that series can't be used in the live action show which is a real shame i think the creators of this new show are trying to negotiate something they did hint at that uh, when talking on a panel at a convention so you never know but they have taken elements of some of those heroes for the 2001 series they basically took Deflader Mouse and American Maid and just gave them new names. Deflader Mouse became Batman Well, American Maid became Captain Liberty, and but they were still basically the same characters, just changed enough that they could get around that rights issue. Uh, obviously for this new show they don't want to just keep copying and recycling the same things, so they've taken elements of Deflader Mouse and American Maid but put them into rather different characters. Deflader Mouse. I should have known you'd be out tonight. Well, if it isn't American Maid, the world's most patriotic domestic. This looks like a job for Deflator Mouse, not some mop squeezer. Why don't you go scrub out a toilet somewhere? Why don't you go smell up some cave? There's a villain working for the Terror called Miss Lint. Overkill. Yeah. I heard. You say anything to you about me? What? And it's been hinted at that her and an anti-hero called Overkill have a bit of a history, a bit of a romantic history, which sounds as if it's going to play into the kind of relationship that Deflader Mouse and American Maid had, where they were constantly bickering like an old married couple almost, or, you know, a separated couple that are constantly arguing. There's a bit of sexual tension there. And I think it's interesting that they've taken that concept, which they did derive a lot of comedy from in the cartoon series and in the 2001 series, and they've now adapted it to a super villainess and an anti-hero. However, Overkill, as well as having these elements of Deflader Mouse, also is pretty much Big Shot from the cartoon show. Now, this looks like a job for Big Shot. <laughs> now, Big Shot was basically a rip-off slash parody of The Punisher. He, he looked nigh and exactly the same as The Punisher, so I can understand why in the show they couldn't really tell, well, as well as the rights issues with the old cartoon, the design of it would be far too close to the, the, the actual Marvel Comics Punisher that they wouldn't be able to get away with it. So turning him into Overkill works really well. And it's, he was always a funny character, even though he wasn't used all that much in the cartoon. So I'm glad they've taken the idea of him and brought it into live action and given him a more central role because so far he's pretty much the only other hero we've seen beyond the Tick and Arthur and Superion who is a parody of Superman. 
Now, even though he's had different names over the years, there has always been a parody Superman character in the Tick. Back in the, the comics, the cartoons, and the 2001 series, they had this character, and they've brought that back again. But as I say, I don't think he was called Superion in the past. But I am suspicious of him. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that he's in league with the Terror somehow. I also think they're going to reveal that Big Shot was part of this superhero team that Arthur used to idolise as a kid, who he then witnessed being murdered by the Terror in an attack that also ended up killing Arthur's father. One of this superhero team survived, but he had his hands crushed and he was blinded by weaponised syphilis. Now, Big Shot has electronic eyes and cybernetic hands, so it's pretty obvious that he is probably this character, and maybe the whole reason that the terror didn't kill him when he killed the rest of the team is because of this relationship that he has with Miss Lint and Miss Lint whispered in the terror's ear you know just leave that one alive because she had feelings for him and that's why he is now on a crusade against the terror. The show isn't action focused but it is enough action to satisfy you it's not like the 2001 series where it's purely based on the comedy there's a lot more drama and emotion and action in this one to make it a more rounded show and they're things that i do think were missing from the 2001 series and things that are going to make this series uh, give it more staying power basically it's going to stick with you more than just being a bit of a laugh for half an hour the world owes you a hug small soldier and i'm the one that's gonna give it uh, no Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. Okay, Ted. That's it. This is the good stuff. The raw feed! I'm breaking a little bit. Oh, yeah. Just feel the hug. Okay. Let yourself be hugged. Uh, uh, but that's it. Hug me back. Yeah. Arthur's sister Dot also gets a far bigger role in this than she's ever had before. She was only really in two or three episodes of the animated series, only in one episode of the 2001 series, and she's basically just a bit of a nag who was there to tell Arthur that she disapproves and doesn't agree with his lifestyle. Whereas in this, they're giving her a lot more personality. She's in every episode. They've given her a bit of a backstory that they haven't quite delved into yet, where she is actually helping criminals uh, being a, a medic for them on the side to make extra money, which obviously gives her links to the underworld that could come in handy for the Tick and Arthur. She also takes the place of American Maid slash Captain Liberty a bit, in that so far we don't have any female heroes in the group, so she's kind of the closest thing we've got to that. The Tick really deserves to be more popular than it is. It's really funny, it's got some great characters. The Tick himself is just so lovable. How can you not like this guy who's forever enthusiastic and forever sees the best in people. There's just something heartwarming about how he sees the best in Arthur. Most people would look at Arthur as just this little kind of loser, basically, but the Tick instantly sees greatness in this guy that even Arthur doesn't see. And I think we all kind of long for that in our life. We all want a Tick in our life who's gonna just believe in us no matter what and think that we're brilliant. What if Arthur is awesome? What if his job is to spread his wings and soar? What if you're awesome too? But you don't know it because you're looking at a burning flame on the horizon called Arthur and you want to run up and stomp it out like a rhino on the veldt. Don't be rhino dot. Be happy camper dot. When Dot, Arthur's sister, and everyone else is kind of holding him back and saying, no, Arthur, you can't do this or you shouldn't do that. You're just a normal little guy. And the tick's like, no, Arthur, spread your wings, tame that bull. But it's just a really funny show as well. I can't think of a superhero parody that's better than the tick. Not just from now, but from ever. And in this world where we are overpopulated by superhero stuff now, I mean, there's so many TV shows and movies coming out, and I think fatigue is setting in, you know, a lot of people aren't going to the cinema at the minute to see superhero movies. A lot of films this year kind of underperformed, and it's just because we're, we're inundated with superheroes. And so having a superhero show that's different like this, and like Logan and like Deadpool were, is something that we really need now when so many superhero shows and movies are becoming formulaic. I'm also looking forward to the Judge Dredd TV series, Mega City 1, for the same reason, that I love comic book stuff, but it is getting formulaic, and I think the Judge Dredd show will be something different, much like the Tick is. And it makes the Tick very relevant now for him to return in a world that is overpopulated with superheroes. It's ripe for a parody. There was a character in the cartoon show, he was only ever in one episode, in a very short scene, called Bipolar Bear. 
This looks like a job for Bipolar Bear. But I just can't seem to get out of bed this month. And I thought he was such a funny character. And maybe people would find it offensive who have got bipolar and depression. But I thought it was a, the potential there for a hilarious superhero character. But they never used him again, I guess because they didn't want to push it in a cartoon show. But since this is live action and aimed at an older audience, and it is aimed at an older audience, there's a lot of swearing and relatively brutal violence. This isn't a kid's show. I'd like to say in advance, I do not support his methods. <laughs> so they could bring Bipolar Bear in, but there's probably that rights issue with the cartoon that they can't. But I would love to see that character expanded, because I don't think he was ever in the comics either. Literally in, like, 20 seconds of the first episode of the cartoon series. But I want to see him come back, as well as obviously Deflator Mouse and Sewer Urchin. I'd also love to see Dinosaur Neil. I think that would be great to see, especially as they are now building a Godzilla King Kong monster movie universe. They could do something quite funny with a parody of that if they brought in Dinosaur Neil. <laughs> and they could develop his relationship with Dot, as in the cartoon series, Dinosaur Neil and Dot actually do get married. So that would be interesting to do. Um, but like I say, the rights issue's probably gonna hold that back, which is so frustrating. Did Disney really need the tick? <laughs> They've got so much now. And it's not like they can do anything with those characters. I don't think that, that Disney can actually make their own tick show. Pretty much the only thing they can do with those rights are sell the DVDs, I guess which I don't think they even have done. I don't think The Tick's been released in America in full-on DVD. In the UK we have, we've had the complete series in America. I think they only got two DVDs and a couple of episodes were missing off of them anyway, of, of season one and two. It is frustrating that they've only shown six episodes so far though. And one of those was a year ago. We had to wait a year for the next five episodes. And then that ended, five episodes you get through pretty quickly. And especially as they released them all at once, it's not like they released one episode a week, they released all five episodes on the same day, so you could binge watch that in the space of one weekend, as I did, and then you're left having to wait till next year now for the next four to six episodes. It's just a bit too long away. I know most series do this now, but they don't give you all episodes in one go, in one day, and then say, right, now you've got to wait six months for the rest. It's just a bit too long of a wait. I don't know if Amazon is still being a bit cautious with the show, testing the waters with it still to see what the reaction will be before they progress with making more episodes, but maybe leaving it two months would have been okay, but I think it is going to be next year now before we get the rest of the episode, so that's at least four months basically we're going to have to wait. It's, it just feels too much, and I worry that any excitement built up by the show will have been lost by then because it's not a big enough show that people are going to be hyped for months and months on end the way that they are for say Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. I don't think you can play those kind of games with a smaller level show like this so they need to be careful with that. And so far the, the reaction has been positive and I think it's a really great show. So if you get a chance to, I know it means just having a, an Amazon Prime subscription, you know there are ways around that, but uh, I definitely give this show a watch. And I'm really hoping that it will get released on DVD because I, I want this in my collection. I've got all the other series of The Tick, the animated series, the live action show. I want this new one to put in here because it's, at, my, at the moment, I'm tempted to say it's my favourite already, even though they've only shown six episodes. But as I said, maybe that's just because it's new and you know, you always get a bit excited over something that's new. Maybe in a year's time, I'll go back to feeling that the animated series is the best. But the, the, the mix of kind of drama and action in this, and that they're taking it a little bit more seriously. It's not just goofy. There is obviously the humour, that's the heart of the show. But there's a bit more heart to it as well, which I think is going to make this the best tick show we've had. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.